So what are the politics of the convoy and what does it tell about the future of politics in this country? Are there dangers or opportunities here? Let's find out. Joining me now, Jenny Byrne, the former advisor to Prime Minister Stephen Harper. She ran a campaign for him and the former principal secretary to Prime Minister Trudeau, Jerry Butts. Uh, Jenny and Jerry, great to have both of you on the program. Jenny, uh, this has been interesting watching Conservative support, various Conservatives, some were on Parliament Hill, uh, some have expressed a lot of support for the organizers, others not. How do you analyze how the Conservative Party has approached this convoy? Well, I think the convoy is much more than, uh, than what it is, what, what has been perceived as vaccine mandates for truckers. I think Glenn McGregor said yesterday in a tweet that this is this has turned into much more in terms of talking to the crowd. And I, I think that what's even more important is to look at, at what has happened off Parliament Hill in terms of different communities and, and, and rallies. Thousands upon thousands of people uh, lined roads to wave at, at truckers over the last week uh, leading into uh, leading into this rally. And and I know that we are we go on Twitter quite a lot and um, it's very entertaining at times. But if you go on a medium like Facebook, which which I keep, keep in touch with high school friends, I was amazed at how many people uh, actually went out and were cheering on these truckers, severely uh, normal people who are upset or just they've had enough. We, we're going into 23 months of uh, COVID and, and they were out talking about that they're uh, upset that their six-year-old still has to wear a mask in uh, in class that the my one friend his 12 year old son is severely depressed and he's 12 years old and so i think what this has done evan it has just it's been a rallying cry but i don't think that politicians or i don't think the media should look at this that this is simply the people out there uh, protesting either on parliament hill or in places right across the country from victoria to um uh to regina uh, are actually protesting or out there for for uh, trucker vaccine mandates what's your read on the situation jerry butts well, it's interesting, Evan. You said that the Conservatives are here this weekend to talk about why they last, well, why they lost the last election, and the convoy entered town like the Kool Aid Man, uh, busting through the wall to remind them why they last lost the last election, and that is, most regular Canadians don't think that the Conservative Party can keep its more extreme fringe at bay, and what we've seen in the national capital this weekend is a clear demonstration of that. Jenny, can, can, I mean, part of the, the challenge, and maybe Aaron O'Toole and some others were trying to thread this needle, is we support the truckers, as you're saying. And, and I was out there, I, I spoke to many people. There's, as you say, there's a diverse series of agenda, but we don't support the organizers. But can they separate themselves from the organizers who have raised eight and a half million bucks and, and you know, the Maxime Bernays who are on the hill and, and yet still say we support the truckers and disassociate themselves from, from the, the leaders of that convoy? But, but but Evan, we've there is it's for rallies across the country for years. Uh, this has been an an issue. If you go back to uh, the war between Israel and Lebanon, uh, Liberal MP at the time, Denny Coderre, marched alongside people waving Hezbollah flags and signs that said "Death to Israel." I don't think anyone thinks that he associated himself with the organizers of the rally. If they if 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 they were they were hold if they were you know holding up the flags of uh, of banned terrorist organizations from pretty much around the world. And so when you get to rallies of this size, I think that you're going to end up, um, you're going to end up attracting people that, that are, do, do not espouse to your views, but there's, uh, there is no organization or, or there is no correlation between the organizers of the rally or, or bad apples, so to speak, uh, uh, what, what politicians were saying and, and what the Conservative Party of Canada's uh, view is in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, lockdowns or COVID policies. Jerry, what's your view on that? Yeah, look, I, I think that obviously in any uh, mass movement, there are going to be some people who are on the fringe and don't espouse the views of the broader movement itself. I think in those circumstances, it's the leadership of the, the political party's um, obligation to speak some truth to their own followers. And if this were a climate rally on Parliament Hill, that ran cars up onto the, that used the cenotaph as a parking lot and uh, draped an inverted flag on the Terry Fox Memorial. You would expect people who support climate action to go out there and call that out. And you haven't seen that from the conservative movement. I'd be saying, folks, look, you're getting in the way of your message. You're gonna hurt your own cause. And in this case, it's, uh, uh, you know, you look at what's going on in Parliament Hill 
And you start to think that this is the cause, that creating mayhem is the cause. And we've seen this, uh, I see this in my day job, we've seen this in democracies around the world, that the disruption is the point. Uh, J Jenny, what about the message on vaccines? I'm, I'm just trying to figure this out. You know, a year and a half ago, the Conservatives were railing that Justin Trudeau was behind. Canadians aren't going to get vaccines. There's not enough vaccines. Now a lot of them are front and center on a protest that's saying, don't make us take vaccines. Is that message dangerous for the Conservatives to figure out what side they're on here? Well, I think there's a difference between, uh, between everyone's kind of being lumped in together, Evan. There, there's a much difference between someone that uh, is, anti -vax is, is a, an anti-vaxxer, so to speak, uh, and people that just don't support vaccine mandates. They're, they're two totally different things. We are now, I think the frustration that Canadians have is, is if you had said to Canadians last year in January of, of 2021 uh, that we were going to be one of the most vaccinated countries in the entire uh, uh, in the entire world, and we were going to, especially in our largest provinces of Ontario and Quebec, we were we were going to we were still going to be in the actually in the same lockdown uh, measures that uh, that we were uh, that we were then. I think people would be uh, there. There is they would be as frustrated as what they are now, and so. I think there's a much difference between people that um, uh, that, that that are that that are not vaccinated and are anti-vax and people that just do not support a vaccine mandate because they're watching countries around the world uh, that are actually scrapping their vaccine mandates uh, inter and also passports. The UK announced it last week. Uh, Denmark as well. Uh, Jerry, uh, did what about Justin Trudeau? Did he have a Hillary Clinton moment when he said these are you know this is a fringe minority with unacceptable views and the comments he made about racists in, in the campaign was that his basket of deplorable moments? In other words, is that a problem for him and danger for him? Well, look, uh, as you know, Evan, I will let the government speak for itself and the prime minister can speak for himself. I think that a lot of this, um, the back and forth, as Jenny said on Twitter and in the media is kind of surreal to most Canadians. I, I don't think that the folks enjoying this show with their uh, Sunday uh, morning coffee are really thinking about that kind of political point scoring. I think what they're concerned about is that this looks like a fringe movement. Uh, and I agree with the prime minister. It certainly seems like a fringe movement movement in the, uh, the rhetoric that they've used that has taken hold of one of the major political parties. I mean, at the end of the day, and, and I hear people's frustrations. I have two teenagers at home who've spent more time at a school in Ontario than just about any of their peers anywhere in the democratic world. It's a very frustrating situation for parents and most especially for kids everywhere. I've got two kids who are about to lose half of their high school years to this thing. So everybody's frustrated. But you know what? I'm frustrated that it's cold in January in Canada. There's nothing the federal government can do about that either. And if we're really worried about, if this crowd is really worried about and concerned about and against these lockdown measures, then they should be at Queen's Park, not Parliament Hill. Okay, I got about 30 seconds. Jenny, just, I'm trying to figure out where this movement goes. Like you saw, there's eight and a half million bucks they raised. Is this, a, is this movement going to die out after the pandemic ends? Or is this an animated political movement we've got to watch? I, I honestly, I have no idea in terms of whether this movement, uh, uh, this movement continues. Uh, but if I were uh, 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 to speak with Jer what Jerry just said, if I was Doug Ford and Francois Legault who are going into an election uh, this year, I would be watching very carefully in terms of what the public sentiment is. Evan, right. can I uh, can I just chime in on that last point because I think this is a critical point. Eight and a half million bucks is a lot of money. Jenny and I uh, ran the 2015 campaigns for our respective parties with uh, a lot of other people. But we, that was famously the longest campaign in Canadian history. I think we spent $42 million in 78 days. So eight and a half million bucks is a lot of money. And not only the money, but the data that's being collected by these organizers, they know who's sympathetic to this cause everywhere in Canada. I think what this is all about is the next conservative leadership campaign. And that's where that money and that data is going to go. All right, well, we'll watch it. I'd love to have both of you back, Jenny Byrne, Jerry Butts. I appreciate it. Thanks, both of you, for joining us today. Great to see you.